Hey guys, today we're going to do the unboxing and overview of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, the latest in the DJI Pocket series. So I actually owned the DJI Pocket 2 for a while um, and I actually really liked using it. The only issue I had with it was that um, I just didn't feel that the camera was as powerful enough as my smartphone, so that's why I reverted back to using the Osmo Mobile series. Um, right now I'm using a DJI OM5. Uh, but yeah, I still do like the uh, the versatility of Pocket 3 because I don't even need to, you know, always attach my smartphone all the time and uh, worry about setting my smartphone up and then, you know, uh, using the app and stuff like that to sync it and everything. Um, actually, I rarely ever even use the DJI app to record stuff on my smartphone because it actually takes up a lot of battery life when you pair it with the Osmo Mobile. So, for a lot of reasons, I do prefer the DJI Pocket but the issue with us was the Pocket 2, um, I just didn't feel like the camera was powerful enough or on par with uh, some of the latest smartphones. And this one probably still isn't, but at least it should be better than the Pocket 2. So yeah, I actually do like the form factor and the concept of the Pocket. It's just that the Pocket 2, um, I wish the camera was a little bit more powerful. So they addressed that in the Pocket 3, they increased the sensor size. So the Pocket 2 had a 1, 1 1.7 inch sensor. This one just has a straight up 1 inch sensor. So this is a bigger sensor, should provide better uh, video quality. And in addition to that, they increased the uh, size of the display as well. That's another thing that, um, it wasn't like my biggest peeve about the Pocket 2, but it did um, make it so that it was kind of hard to shoot some videos because the screen was very very tiny uh, and they actually increased the screen size in the Pocket 3. So I think that was the two biggest issues and uh, they addressed them both on the Pocket 3. Right? They increased the sensor size, uh, should be better for taking videos, should be kind of up to par with some of the smartphones nowadays and um, well not the top end smartphones but it should be at least I'm guessing should be at least uh, equal to some of the better smartphones these days in terms of the uh, video quality and the yeah the little built-in display they increase the size of that because it was really tiny on the pocket too so it's kind of hard to see some see like the playback sometimes um, in the viewfinder it was kind of small sometimes but now they increased that so they kind of addressed all the issues I had and this one is the creator combo which retails for six hundred and seventy dollars US so it's not not cheap Right. This is an investment, um, but it's probably going to replace my Osmo Mobile, of course, and maybe even my DJI Action Camera, if it's good enough at what it does. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to test it out and um, see if, you know, for vlogging and stuff like that, I like to do uh, vlogging. I like to let's take videos walking down the street or just like film. Um, film myself going walking around and doing stuff right so you can see a lot of my travel videos it's basically like that I'm just holding my smartphone or I'm holding the uh, Osmo gimbal or Osmo or something and I'm just like going around recording stuff and that's probably what I'll do with this right uh, so this is just like a smaller more compact way of doing it so this creator combo comes with a wide-angle lens um, a mic 2 transmitter and a battery handle so the mic 2 transmitter should provide better audio quality as well uh, that's one of the things that DJI Pocket 2 um, it had a okay mic, but it wasn't a great mic. So that's another thing is this one with a wireless transmitter mic Yeah, this one should provide better audio quality as well Not to mention I can actually shoot podcasts and stuff using this thing too if it has like a pretty decent mic You just set it up on a table and I can uh, shoot a podcast with someone so or a video You know blog with someone so that's uh, it would just you know my own video blog so yeah there's a number of things I can do with this right I can walk around or I can just set it up on a table somewhere and shoot video and now that has a great mic I hope so um, <laughs> I can do even more with it so that's pretty good so yeah all those reasons is why I got it um, so you can check the specs now the one inch CMO sensor that's an increase over the pocket 2 uh, 4k I don't really shoot 4k anyways because most people don't have uh, the ability to play back in 4k unless it's on their TV um, and it takes up a lot of battery life and storage space so I usually keep my videos still to 1080 uh, it has a rotatable screen that's really interesting because uh, it's a two inch rotatable screen so I think the DJI pocket 2 it looked like a one inch it was a really small, tiny screen. It looked like a 1-inch screen or 1.4-inch or whatever. Uh, it was not rotatable. This one is 2-inch rotatable, so bigger display and it's rotatable, so that's cool. Uh, of course, you have the 3-axis gimbal stabilization, which you get with all the other pockets. Active Track 6.0, that's an uh, improvement over the Pocket 2, which had the previous version. Um, hope it works well. You can like, track people when they're doing stuff. Full pixel fast focusing, D log M and 10 bit. Uh, that's for more advanced creators who want to apply LUTs and stuff like that. 
stereo recording, uh, pocket sized. Okay. All right. What do we get here? Don't eat the gel packs, boys. All right. So you get um, the recommended video editing app by DJI called Lightcut. And that's just a QR code to download it. And as well as the DJI app from the store. Um, so you do need to have the DJI app, I believe. That's an app you have to run or something to connect to your uh, your device to set it up. <clears throat> that's uh, at least for the Osmo Mobile, you didn't have to, but you had to at least like set it up and stuff. So there's some like, what is it, warranty information? Yep. And then here is the quick start guide for the Pocket 3. Should be pretty simple. Um, I think it, this one comes with a tripod, a mini tripod. And then it comes with a wide angle lens. So it's pretty cool. You can just, the lens is magnetic, you just attach it. I've used that before on my Pocket 2. Uh, you charge it like that, USB-C. Um, this is like a storage case, I believe, and a storage bag. Like, I don't really need instructions on how to use a storage bag, but okay. Uh, rotatable display. The joystick controls uh, the camera and stuff like that manually if you want. Um, most of the times you just leave it automatic, but sometimes you want might want to manually control the camera. And then you attach this extra accessory here, which adds uh, some extra battery life, I believe, and a wireless mic transmitter attachment too. So, yep, that's that. And then the safety guidelines. Don't really need to read that too much. In here, I think these are some of the extras that you get. Actually, no, it's just, uh, <laughs> wow, it's just this, this case, that's it. I thought it would be including extra stuff, but no. Just this Osmo Pocket protective cover. This whole, like, big box here is just for this one protective cover, which I'm not sure how much I'm going to use this one, but, you know, nice to have it, right, to protect your DJI Pocket 3, but I'm not sure if it warrants including, like, <laughs> taking up so much space just for this. All right. I mean, we already get a carrying case, right? So, most of the time, I'll just put in the carrying case to protect it. Alright, so here we go. It comes with this carrying case here. Um, we're in a DJI. It actually looks like a toiletry bag. <laughs> Small toiletry bag. Alright, let's see what's inside. Goodies. We got lots of goodies. That's where all the goodies are. They have, like, separate... Compartments for each of thing, each of these devices here. Okay, this thing. This thing is the um, attachment add-on for extra battery. I think. This is this one for extra battery or charger? So, yeah, this one adds a it has a USB-C charger here, and this is the attachment part. And oh, it's a tripod mount. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's cool. The tripod mount is, of course, very useful, right? Because I use uh, tripods a lot. Um, I'm using one right now to record this video. So tripods are very, very useful. So it's nice they, uh, this one has a tripod mount with it. Nice. Don't need to buy that aftermarket. So there's an even bigger attachment here. This is like a smaller attachment. Um, actually, they both have tripod mounts here. So I wonder... Huh. What is this one for then? Is this just a smaller version? Like, why would I want to use this one when I have this bigger one? Is this just a bigger, bigger battery pack? Yeah, this is, I think this is the bigger battery, extended battery or something like that. Right, it comes with charger, tripod mount. I just wondering when I would not use this one. When would I use this one then? Wouldn't I always want to have extended battery? Maybe it's just because uh, in case you don't want to add too much weight or something like that, you would use the smaller one and it's more portable, I guess. But, you know, I would always want extended battery. There's no situation where I, where extended battery would not be useful. So I would pretty much just always use this one. It doesn't seem to be... I mean, yeah, this one is lighter, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> when would I ever use the smaller one? Okay, uh, then you get a windscreen for the mic. And this is a lanyard. Okay, yeah. So you can carry it with you all the time. We have the lanyard and the, the windscreen for windy conditions. Uh, comes with the USB-C to USB-C cable, as expected. Don't need this. All 
Okay, this one. Let's take a look. Okay, this one is the mini tripod. Yep. So you can attach it. So if you have a yeah, just attach it like this, right? This has a tripod mount already. Attach it and then flip it up, and then you have your mini tripod mount so you can just record it stand it up on a table start recording yourself vlogging or whatever so nice pretty necessary right if you have a if you don't have a tripod of course I highly recommend getting one if you're doing any kind of video recording this is the uh, mic transmitter so it's a wireless mic transmitter so uh, this is a type where it clips onto you I guess so you you clip it where you want to record so uh, most of the time it would be yourself if you're recording like a, just a video log and something like that uh, Vlogging or something you would just clip it onto yourself uh, This by itself I believe is like a $200 accessory if you buy it from DJI uh, So there is a 3.5 millimeter aux in here um, Yeah, this one to link it or pair it and the power button right here and uh, this is a charger, I believe. Looks like a charger for magnetic charging. Uh, USB-C cable, you can connect it here, and then a record button here, and a LED indicator light. So this by itself is a pretty complex piece of technology, and by itself I think costs like 200 bucks. So it's, uh, this is uh, one of the main things about this Creator Combo, why it costs so much more. I think the Creator Combo is like a $200 upcharge, and it's mostly because of the mic, but also these other accessories included as well. And then uh, nothing else in the bag. Here is the DJI Pocket. So yeah, uh, looks like this. So you rotate the screen, shutter, record button right here, uh, and SD joystick, okay? So yeah, definitely a bigger display compared to the Pocket 2. It looks like, yeah, this is a 2-inch display. I believe the Pocket 2 had like a 1.4 inch or something like that. So definitely a welcome improvement because I felt like the Pocket 2 display was too small um, and it was hard to see stuff through the viewfinder. So yeah. Ooh, there you go. It just, ooh, it just turns on like that. Yep, and uh, here you have the camera, the improved camera, which I hope I can at least keep up with uh, some of the modern smartphones. Yeah, the Pocket 3, Osmo right here. It's interesting they reverted back to the Osmo name. I think the Pocket 2 was just called the Pocket 2. This one reverted back to the Osmo Pocket, which is what the first generation was called. Um, and then you have the manual joystick right here for manual control, a record button. Uh, and yeah, this really is the uh, evolution of the Osmo line, I would say. And I've bought every DJI Osmo since the original, I believe. <laughs> so the original DJI Osmo came, back, came out back in 2015, and uh, I thought it was super cool to have like a handheld like gimbal accessory. Uh, so I got that one back in 2015, did a lot of recordings with it in Korea and traveling, and then bought the DJI Osmo Plus in 2016, which is an improved version. Uh, made a lot of travel videos with that one too. Um, and then, yeah, I just went through a bunch of different Osmo accessories since then, right? I have the Osmo Action, uh, 2 and 3, I believe, I've owned before, uh, and then the DJI Pocket 2 before, of course, and the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and 5. So, different, I've owned a whole bunch of different Osmo accessories. This is just the latest. Uh, okay, so download DJI MIMO. Okay, so yeah, this is just asking you to download that app. Okay, so here you go, uh, the little viewfinder here. You can uh, and control that. Yep. And control the uh, the gimbal right here. I'll do playback. Okay. So yeah, you can enter uh, the video mode right here. Rotate. Yeah, got it. So a lot of different um, functionality here. So SD card slot. That's pretty important. That's where you'll be recording to. So you got to insert SD card if you really want to record. And then. Okay, yeah, it says I don't have an SD card, but if I swipe this way, it will actually try to play back uh, my videos from the SD card. If I swipe this way, uh, it's different modes here. So video, there's also photo, panorama, low light, slow motion, time lapse. So those are all the different modes. And I actually do take a lot of time lapses from my apartment, so this is actually useful. Just put it on a tripod and, and do that instead of just using my phone. Um, this is the resolution up here. I can change it 1080. Uh, 30 FPS and changes 60 FPS for smoother video 2.7k and goes all the way up to 4k 60 FPS if you want um, again I stick to usually 1080 just for battery life and storage uh, maybe I'll put it 60 though yeah maybe I'll put it 60 FPS 1080 um, and then you can zoom right here uh, let's see 
They don't have a dedicated zoom toggle, right? No dedicated zoom switch. So I wonder if this is a digital zoom. Push towards to oh okay. That it, okay, you do have a zoom control here, right? I wonder if this is a digital zoom or optical zoom. But anyways, you have uh, the ability to control this zoom right here. Right? And then um, this one is to rotate it. So, you know, this is going to be recording myself, right, in selfie mode or whatever. Uh, so that's, of course, useful if you're going to record yourself. And this is going back. And battery, you see that right there. Swipe down. And it's kind of like a phone. You have, like, different, like a phone menu. You have, like, different kinds of controls you can do here. Uh, I guess this is, like, stabilization or something like that. Um, looks like when you're running. Rotational speed, I see. Rotational speed. Gimbal mode, follow or tilt locked, FPV mode. Those are three different modes right there. Shooting orientation, uh, settings for the wireless mic, rotate screen to power off, wearable mode, dual calibration, joystick speed, video compression. So there's a lot of settings here. LED language, yeah, a lot of settings there. Uh, F, this is FT selfie mode or something. Okay, so maybe you. You might use that when you're recording yourself. Uh, brightness of the display. Tilt axis, slider control zoom. And custom modes, okay. So yeah, there's a bunch of different modes you can use with this thing. Uh, and you can actually like set it so that you can just flip it down to shut it off, which is a nice little convenience feature as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which uh, definitely the video quality looks to be a nice improvement over the Pocket 2, but I'll have to test it out. Uh, so I'll show you guys some video I recorded with this later on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the unboxing part. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm uh, gonna record some video on this thing and I'll also be testing out the wireless mic as well to see how well that works. Yeah, so you can uh, press this, right? Obviously it's a record button you can use to record. Right now I have no SD card, but yeah, you would just use that to record. And it's pretty straightforward to use. Um, this is pretty much like a mini Osmo handheld recorder because uh, I remember using the full-sized Osmo handheld recorder back in the day. The first uh, two Osmo handhelds, the Osmo and the Osmo Plus, they were actually big devices where you kind of like strap it onto your, you carry it with you on like kind of like a handheld case and they were actually pretty big devices um, and I would just, you know, take it out to record and stuff like that. This is kind of just like a miniature version of that, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And the video quality, I don't think is is uh, is worse either. It's actually should be as good or better than the uh, the bigger Osmos I had before, even though the physical size is smaller. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, definitely useful for me. So because I'll be traveling a lot, and I usually take a lot of videos when I travel and stuff. And uh, here is the USB-C port on the bottom here that you can use to attach. Uh, you can attach this one or. I actually don't know why you would use this one over this one because this just looks like a bigger battery So you would just use this one right attach this one Yeah, you add the extended battery. I mean sure it adds some weight and you know length obviously, but But yeah, you can also add the mini one I guess if you really care about the portability That's what they have too. and then this one is is easier to hold So I guess the main reason you want to use a smaller one is just because it's a little bit easier to hold so both of them, I think, are extended batteries, but and and they add a tripod mount. That's another thing as well. And yeah, just to shut it off, um, I actually do not see any power button on this thing. So I guess the only way to shut it off is that I've seen is just to put this in portrait and then just wait, and then it'll shuts off like that automatically. So I guess that's the way you do it because I don't see any kind of dedicated power button here. Um, also, I forgot to show there are two extras inside here. <laughs> that I'd uh, forgot about. Um, so these are, let's see, let's take a look. One of them should be the wide angle lens though. Yeah, it's just really tiny. So yeah, this one, what is this one? Oops. Some kind of like, I'm actually not sure what this is. <laughs> Let me take a look. Uh, does this seem What? What is this? Oh, okay. So, this is supposed to be a mic clip magnet. 
Um, so I guess you stick this onto yourself to clip the mic onto yourself. So it's a magnet, interestingly, to clip the mic onto yourself or something else, I guess. So yeah, that's a mic magnet, very small. And this must be the wide angle lens. Yeah. So even though this is a small, uh, normally this would actually costs quite a bit. Uh, increases the effective view. So let's take a look here. So there's actually no on button for this device. You just uh, basically you flip the display to turn it on and you flip it back down to turn it off and that's how it works I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, right now this is like the normal field of view. Uh, this is, for example, I don't know how well you guys can see this because I'm recording a camera through a camera. But um, <laughs> yeah, like right now, here we go. Okay. Oh, you guys probably can't see that. Here we go. Okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to record this camera through the camera here. Uh, so you guys can see, this is the normal field of view right now, which is already pretty large, actually. It's definitely wider than your typical, um, well, your normal wide lens on your smartphone camera. It's not quite as wide as an ultra wide angle lens on your smartphone camera, but it's about uh, in between, right? So normally it's in between the wide angle and the ultra wide angle for your smartphone. Uh, but if you put this one on, which should just attach magnetically, yeah, then it increases to a, about the same length as the ultra wide on your smartphone camera. So it increases just a little bit more, uh, but about the same as your ultra wide angle lens on your smartphone camera which these days many smartphone cameras come with ultra wide angles and yeah it just attaches magnetically like this detached magnetically and just attaches magnetically like that so yeah um pretty simple you guys want to see yep so it even increases it obviously when i turn it as well so you can do wide angle selfie videos and selfie shots and stuff like that so that's it and turn it off let's wait and there you go it's off so that's it. Um, I just wanted to show the uh, ultra wide angle lens attachment as well. Uh, yeah, so the question on whether this can replace the DJI action cameras or not. Um, so I have an action 3 camera. That's um, my main action camera. I don't use it a whole lot. But I would say in the specific situations where I would use it are like situations where no other camera I think can really do that, right? So if I'm doing something that uh, is basically my hands are not free, right? So that means if I'm doing some extreme like sports or something like that, I'm paragliding for example, I'm on a zip line, um, snowboarding or skiing or you know doing some sport like that, um, I think that's a situation where no other camera except an action camera would actually work. So I don't think the Pocket 3 would actually replace the action camera, but rather supplement it. So there's situations, you know, just using a selfie stick with an action camera, for example, this would probably be better than that, and this would replace that usage uh, scenario. But there's other cases where uh, you have like your camera strapped to your head, right? So say I'm going biking and I just have an action camera strapped to my head or my chest or something like that. Um, so if I'm doing something like that, I don't think that the Pocket 3 can actually replace that. That's something very specific to an action camera. So yeah, something like a GoPro or yeah, in the DJI Osmo Action, that's something that the action camera can do um, that uh, no other camera really can do. <laughs> so yeah, that's why they have like the specific um, strap mounts and stuff like that. Um, so I think action cameras still have their place, right? It's still kind of hard to replace that in those specific situations where your hands are kind of tied, right? So if I'm doing like a you know sport like snowboarding or skiing, swimming, uh, biking, uh, rock climbing, you know, some kind of extreme sports like that, your hands are going to be uh, tied up doing something. And in those situations, this will not work because you obviously need to have a hand to hold this. So. I would say that this does not completely replace an action camera. It will replace the places where you're using an action camera to record yourself. No, that's, that's, uh, it's going to replace those situations, but it's not going to completely replace uh, the other situations where your hands are actually tied up and then you mount your action camera on a strap or something like that, um, you know, or some kind of mount, right? In those situations, I don't think that the Pocket would actually replace that. And that's why DJI sells both of them, right? They sell the Osmo Mobile, they sell the Pocket, and they sell the, um, the action line, right? They're all for different purposes. And obviously they have their drones as well, which is t completely different. Um, and yeah, as for versus the Osmo Mobile, uh, yeah, 
I prefer the Pocket because uh, it's more convenient. Um, I don't have to tie up my phone with doing something. With the Osmo Mobile, um, yeah, I have to take some time to pair up my phone with the app and then uh, I have to you know, use my phone and my phone is all tied up and stuff so I'm using the battery life of my phone and uh, if someone you know, is going to text me or like uh, if, if there's anything situation where I need my phone, I can't use it because I'm using it to record the video. So the Pocket 3 kind of frees up my phone uh, so I can actually use my phone for other things while I'm using this. It's, uh, it's a dedicated camera. So yeah, I think that's the main advantage of using the Pocket over the Osmo Mobile is you have a uh, dedicated camera here that's not tying up your phone. Um, of course, it's more expensive than the Osmo Mobile, but, uh, but yeah, you have a dedicated camera for it and now uh, that the camera has improved since the previous generation, that's really what matters, right? Uh, previously, the only reason I got rid of the Pocket 2 was because the camera uh, was not improved um, over, you know, modern smartphones. But now I think the Pocket 3 camera actually rivals that of modern smartphones um, or the latest uh, top tier smartphones, I guess. Not exactly as great as the top tier, but, uh, you know, just below top tier. So, anyways, the camera's pretty good on the Pocket 3, uh, very acceptable. So, yeah. Um, I would say that's the main advantage. It's just more convenient, don't have to tie up your phone, uh, and yeah, it doesn't use up the battery life on your phone, and you can, yeah, you, basically it's, it's, uh, it's just more convenient to have like an all-in-one type of device where you can just take it out and start shooting something without having to go through any kind of uh, other steps like pairing an app or something like that. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it, and uh, yeah, the Pocket 3, I'm going to test it out. Uh, do a road test just around my area in Vancouver and uh, let me know what you guys think about it And I also like how easy it is to uh, to just turn on and turn off right turn on you just go like that you just uh, Flip the screen and it'll turn itself on by the way uh, when you're in other modes like when you're looking at videos and stuff like that You can actually just uh, turn the screen and it will not turn off uh, in order to actually get it to turn off You have to go back into the viewfinder screen and then flip the screen. That's when it turns off um, that's that's a pretty cool touch. I mean, yeah, if you just want to view your videos in a uh, vertical landscape, like that's the type of landscape you would use for um, like Instagram Live and like uh, maybe some TikTok and like social media and stuff like that. So some people want to view videos like this, then when you're actually viewing videos, then it doesn't turn off and that's fine because that's that's what you want to view your videos in. Then you got to go back to the viewfinder mode to actually turn, turn off like that. And that's fine. I think it, it caters for the people who want to look at their videos in this mode and also uh, have like a nifty way to turn the device off. All right, so now I want to talk about some comparisons. So the DJI Pocket 3 versus the Osmo Mobile. So I have the Osmo Mobile 5, the latest is the Osmo Mobile 6, um, but basically the Osmo Mobile is more of a, a budget choice. Um, this is if you want to use your smartphone as your main recording tool, and granted, if you have a powerful smartphone already with a nice camera, like the latest iPhone or Samsung or Pixel, then uh, this will actually be better image quality than the Pocket 3, because the latest uh, cell phone camera is actually better image quality than the Pocket 3. Um, so if you have a really nice uh, camera phone then yeah by all means get the Osmo Mobile um, the Pocket 3 is more of like a convenient choice for those of you who like like me um, I don't always want to use my cell phone actually I don't have the best camera on my cell phone anyways because I use a Galaxy Fold 4 as my main phone which is not like a top top end camera um, and the Pocket 3 in in improved its uh, camera capabilities compared to the Pocket 2 so uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's it has the uh, ultra wide angle and everything already, so it's just a more convenient choice. Those of you who don't want to use a smartphone because you might want to save your smartphone to do other things, right? For me, um, when I'm recording and stuff, I might get some text messages or I might want to look at my maps and stuff like that. I want I want to use my smartphone for other things, and if I'm recording with my smartphone, then obviously I can't use it for the, those things, right? So yeah, this is for like a, a nice alternative choice. Those of you who like to. Um, yeah, just have like a nice convenient camera that's all like everything's built in. You don't have to pair with your smartphone or anything like that. No app needed. Um, I mean, you could install the DJI MIMO app and ask you to install it, but I don't have to use that app. I can just like turn this thing on and start recording right away. So it's very convenient. I uh, don't need to pair my smartphone with anything. And my smartphone is not being tied up with this. So it's not using my smartphone battery life. It's not using... Um, it's not using my smartphone so I can use it to respond to messages and do other stuff with it. So it keeps my smartphone free for other things. Whereas if you use the Osmo Mobile, of course, you have your smartphone tied up and you use your battery life and everything. So there, that's the downside of the Osmo Mobile 5. So I would say pros and cons depending on how you want to use it. If you have a really powerful smartphone, like camera phone already, and you don't mind it being tied up to take video, then 
uh, any if you're already using it for like a you know selfie stick or something like that then sure Osmo Mobile 5 I think it's good enough for most people and it's more affordable too it's the more budget option this one more expensive uh, but everything's kind of built in right for uh, those of you who use the traditional Osmo handhelds like I have since the beginning uh, this is basically the evolution of that the micro version of the original Osmo gimbal handhelds so yeah it doesn't tie up your smartphone or anything like that it's just convenient because everything's already built in now compared to the DJI Action, uh, that's also interesting too because the Action can be used the same way that the Pocket 3 has. Um, so you can, you know, do a lot of attachments for this just like with a GoPro. So you can attach like a selfie stick or whatever. It's basically going to be the same as a Pocket 3 once you attack, attach a selfie stick to it. Now the difference is the Action cameras, I have the Action 3, the latest is the Action 4. Um, difference is this one is, um, you can be attached to any mount, right? You can ha have a chest mount, you can have like a head, uh, head mount, um, you can attach it to like your handlebars of a bike and stuff. So it can be used in more ways, I would say. So yeah, if you're doing some extreme thing like skiing or snowboarding, surfing, uh, biking, uh, rock climbing, uh, basically anything where your hands are not free, then that's where the action camera really shines because this is uh, something that can be attached, mounted, and uh, recording when your hands free. The Pocket cannot do that. Obviously, you still need to use your hands for the Pocket 3. Um, but well, the other thing is, while this one does have the advantage of being able to be used anywhere when you're hands-free, um, I feel like the, the Pocket actually gives you more control over where you're like, you know, because this is actually, you can attach it to a selfie stick and it might be the same thing. But uh, this one, I would say, is better when you're actually, like, tracking stuff, right? So when you're actually, like, uh, looking around, um, tracking specific things, uh, like a traditional camcorder style, I guess. So, yeah, imagine, like, uh, remember, like, camcorders, right? Um, like, <laughs> we're talking, like, 20 years ago or whatever. People use handheld camcorders to record stuff. Uh, so... That's where the Pocket 3 is more of a direct replacement for that. So you can just like look around, track things, focus on things, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out. And that's something the action is not really as good for. This is just more for just taking like a field of view, right? Uh, it's not really meant to just track, um, looking around, tracking for specific things. Uh, this is more just, I would say, the specific use cases for doing like sports, right? You're doing some kind of sports or activity. That's when you use this, this one for this one, uh, you can focus on more things. It's better for focusing on more things. So it really depends on your use case here, the action versus the pocket. I have both. Right? They both have their own niche. That's why DJI makes both of these things. Um, so yeah, if you're doing some activity or sport, then I think the Action 3 is really good for that. It has a variety of mounts you can do, and you don't need your hands to do it to necessarily record with it. Pocket 3, um, better for just walking around, focusing on things, like if you're traveling, you want to focus on something, um, and you want to zoom in, zoom out and stuff, using it as a traditional camcorder style, then um, that's what the Pocket 3 is good for. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to make those kind of comparisons. If you're thinking about getting the uh, Pocket versus the Osmo Mobile versus the Action, which one should you get? Really depends on your use case. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, now I will show you a video I took outside in Vancouver. And uh, again, <laughs> take a look. Let me know if you enjoy it or not, uh, what you think of the Pocket 3. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching. All right, so now I am using the Osmo Pocket 3 outside in Vancouver. And uh, I'm actually going to test it out. I'm currently testing it out with the wireless mic right now. So let me know uh, how my sound quality is. Uh, during this video because I'm using the wireless mic with the wind cover by the way two things I discovered when I'm uh, setting up this camera um, so one thing is that remember in the review I said that um, there is like two different like small attachments like battery attachments you can add to the the pocket 3 so actually I am using the smaller one right now it does make a notable difference in the weight and uh, the portability so I take back what I said about it, like who would ever use the smaller one, because actually the smaller one is noticeably more lighter and portable. So if you want the longer extended battery one, then that makes sense. But um, if you don't need to have, like if you're going for like just a short recording session, the smaller one definitely is more portable and lighter. So I do understand why it came with a smaller battery extension than a larger one. Um, another thing is this wireless um, microphone here needs to be charged as its own like power basically obviously right so you charge it separately with the USB C and then yeah you also have your separate power button and then you have to link it with a Bluetooth but once you link it up with a Bluetooth to the pocket 3 it works yeah just 
just like an Apple device would, right? It just connects really fast and easily. So no issues there when connecting to this mic. Uh, as soon as you turn it on, you just put it in the settings and you just like swipe down from the top and then you connect the wireless mic and then it's just, yeah, once you press the link, uh, I guess you press this link button and it'll just automatically connect and knows it's there once you turn it on. So I'm just gonna leave it there so that uh, hopefully the sound quality should come through okay, at least better than the built-in mics on the Pocket 3. So yeah, uh, so right now, I'm actually gonna show you guys um, the fall weather in Vancouver right now because there are a lot of these falling on the ground. So let me switch back to the other side here. So I am using the ultra wide angle camera lens. So let me, this is ultra wide angle and then this is the regular wide angle. So for this, I think it's okay just to have regular wide angle, but just to show you guys again the difference, this is regular wide angle and then this is the ultra wide angle, <laughs> which is uh, maybe a little bit too much, maybe. So anyways, I might just use the regular uh, wide angle. So yeah, we'll go over here, just walking downtown Vancouver. And this is the fall season right now, so you see a lot of leaves and stuff. The apartments nearby where I live. And then a lot of graffiti and stuff over here. Yeah, look at all the different leaves on the ground and stuff. Alright, let's see. Yeah, Vancouver does have a real fall. A real fall. <laughs> it doesn't just go from summer to winter like some countries do. There's a big tank over here in Canon. All right, let's just keep walking downtown. All right, and I am filming at 1080p, 60 frames a second right now. So those are the settings. So we're going to do a walk down the street, nothing special. All right. We're just gonna go down to uh, kind of the heart of downtown, which is like Granville. Granville, Seymour. Those are like the main streets of downtown. Pender, I guess, when I go, once I go down Georgia and Pender. If you guys don't know downtown Vancouver, that's basically what downtown is. again. See, see me again. Um, I think when I do the selfie mode, it might be better to have the ultra wide angle for this part. So I'm gonna put that on. It might be better to have ultra wide for the selfie mode. All right. Ooh. Take a look around. You see there is the Deloitte. There's the Deloitte building right there. The white spot. I've only been the white spot a few times, but right hmm. Decent burgers. I think I prefer Triple O's actually. We're talking about Vancouver specific burgers. And triple O's might be better. 
right. This is what I would use when I'm vlogging and I'm traveling normally. Though I'm not traveling right now. It's just a test, basically. There's a local Catholic church right there. There is the, uh, actually I think this is kind of some kind of theater. But nobody's playing there right now. So. Church. I wish I had this when I was traveling Europe actually. And uh, in Korea and Japan of course. It'd be cool to have this device. I was just using my Osmo Mobile, but I think the Pocket is definitely more convenient for me actually because I don't have to take the time to set up my phone every time to connect to the Osmo Mobile. And with the Pocket, it just, uh, you know, it works. You know, I just take it out, it just tucks itself away, and it's, to me, I think the Pocket is a little bit more convenient than using the Osmo Mobile. Yeah. And plus, it frees up my phone to do other things. When I'm using my Osmo Mobile, obviously I'm using my phone, so if I get any messages or anything like that, then you know I can't really respond to them because I'm using it for recording video. Whereas now, if I have a, a pocket, now I don't I, it frees up my phone so I can actually respond to messages and stuff. So that's another advantage I forgot to talk about: the pocket versus the Osmo Mobile. Yeah, the pocket frees me up. The pocket's more convenient; it frees up my phone. So I can use it to uh, do other things. Yeah, and uh, the, the only thing I didn't like about the pocket before was the the camera sensor, and yeah, now it's got a better camera sensor than before. And fixed the other issue, which was that little tiny one-inch display. Now it's got a two-inch display, so it fixed that as well. So it fixed uh, basically all my issues with it. So this Pocket Three should be pretty good, and I think I'll be using it from now on for uh, recording any kind of travel vlogs or just or just vlogs or podcasts or anything plus okay this one comes with a wireless mic as well so that's really uh that's really useful That's pretty much it. Uh, I'm just going to stop here because I'm just going to a FedEx to pick up a package. Just decided to do a recording on the way there just to show it off. Uh, so, anyways, just uh, wanted to test out the Pocket 3. Seems it works pretty well. Uh, well. I think definitely they improved, addressed every issue I had with the Pocket 2. So, yeah, I'll be using this one from now on. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The life shot of downtown Vancouver, which doesn't look that special, but uh, it was just a test for the Pocket 3. So that's it, guys, the DJI Pocket 3. And uh, once again, as always, let me know if you guys have any questions about it and uh, if you're planning on getting some kind of camera for uh, vlogging or doing podcasts and things like that, or just for traveling. And these days, a lot of people just use selfie sticks record themselves when they're traveling. Well, this is actually a much more convenient alternative. So it's expensive, but uh, it frees up your phone to do other things, and uh, it definitely improved the camera quality and everything on this one. So yeah, pretty good. So yeah, guys, I could be live streaming too, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Don't really do that. And here's another craft beer. Vancouver is famous for craft beer. It's another great craft beer place here. So, let me know if you guys have any questions about the Pocket 3. And yeah, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.